Hey everyone, good morning. We are headed into a wonderful time of year for wildlife photography. Bears are starting to wake up from their winter sleep, birds are starting to nest, and pretty soon we'll start to see all sorts of baby animals running around. Even though there are so many opportunities for wildlife photography this time of year, if you don't go about it the right way, you might not get nearly as much as you could if you were to just tweak a few things. Because this is an extra sensitive time of year for wildlife with all the babies and new life running around, it's vital to be able to go undetected or stay hidden from the animals that you photograph in some cases. In this week's video, I wanted to review with you some of the gear that I use most in my wildlife photography. This is the gear that really works in helping you to stay hidden from wildlife. I'll also be sharing what gear works best for the various species that I photograph. Well, let's jump right into it. Let's start off with one of the most basic and most obvious, yet one of the most effective items that you should be using as a wildlife photography. That is camouflage. Camouflage, properly used, can be a game changer in your wildlife photography. Whether it's camouflage clothing, a camouflage lens cover, or other covers for your gear, camouflage helps break up your outline and obscure irregular lines and shapes that generally aren't found in nature. Notice that I said before that camouflage properly used can be a game changer for you in your wildlife photography. If you're not using it properly, camouflage, again, whether it's clothing or gear covers, whatever it is, will do very little for you in helping you to hide or be obscured from wildlife when you're photographing them. I'm not going to go into detail in this video on how to properly use camouflage. That's not what this video is about. But luckily, I do have another video that I have posted previously where I go into this process on how to properly use camouflage clothing in your wildlife photography. So be sure to check that video out. I'll put a link to it in the description below. Let's talk photo blinds for a minute. There are a lot of different types of photo blinds out there, but they all serve a very similar purpose. Can you guess what that is? To hide you from wildlife. I've used a lot of different types of photo blinds on this channel before. I've used pop-up blinds, natural blinds made out of vegetation, homemade blinds tailored to a specific species, and my favorite floating blind for use on the water. Each of these blinds can be more or less effective with certain species. A pop-up blind can be a good starting point and is useful for many species from birds to foxes. I've made my own blinds for specific species like grouse. These birds can be pretty small and stay on the ground for the most part. So being able to shoot on eye level in a more discreet blind is very important. Natural blinds are perfect for deer, otters, and ducks and can be quite simple to put together out of the natural vegetation in the area. And a floating blind is good for nearly all ducks and shorebirds. I've talked to a lot of photographers that actually view using blinds as a very old school or even outdated method for photographing wildlife. Let me tell you, from somebody who uses blinds on a regular basis, this is not outdated at all. This is one of the best ways that I've found to photograph so many different species of wildlife. With a little bit of trial and error, some research and patience, you can come away with some amazing images of so many different species. If you haven't used a blind before, I highly recommend it. So we've talked about camouflage, we've talked about blinds, but there's something that you can add to either camouflage or blinds to greatly increase your ability to stay hidden from wildlife. That is a ghillie net. As I mentioned before, the purpose of these camouflage patterns is to help break up your outline or make you less distinguishable to the animals that you're trying to stay hidden from and photograph. But I still have a very human outline. My blind still has a very unnatural outline, something you don't find often in nature. Adding a ghillie net will really help dissolve those lines while giving the appearance of natural vegetation. These ghillie nets work so well that I've actually had small rodents and birds come and sit and rest on me as I've been covered in them. I've had otters and foxes and deer pass so close that I could have reached out and pet them. I didn't obviously, but that's just how well these work. They're so versatile in their uses. You can cover yourself and your camera, your other gear, your blind. They are so amazing. If you haven't used one before, I highly recommend it. You can get them online or you can make one at home like I did. 
If you do a lot of wildlife photography in an urban setting, or if you visit a lot of national or state parks, you know just how useful a vehicle can be in your wildlife photography. Many of the species in these areas are very tolerant around vehicles, but as soon as you step out of the vehicles, they can become much more skittish of your presence. So your vehicle essentially becomes another type of blind for you to utilize when photographing wildlife in these areas. They can also help keep animals comfortable while you photograph them. These are the items that I use most to help me stay hidden from wildlife when I photograph them, the items that really work. Now let's look at some examples of which of these items I tend to use more for the different species that I photograph. Some of these items do work better for various species, so let's take a look at those right now. By using these items, keeping your movement slow and spending some time learning about the species you want to photograph, you should have a lot of success in your wildlife photography. Just remember that it's a very sensitive time for wildlife and just because you can get close to and stay hidden from animals doesn't always mean that you should. Respecting the animals that we observe and photograph should always be the top priority and more often than not that means giving them the appropriate space that they need to feel safe. Come photograph bears with me this summer in Alaska. We'll focus on photographing them as they fish, wrestle, and play. We'll have many opportunities to photograph them and other wildlife, all while staying at a very comfortable base camp with individual tents, a group area, bathrooms, hot showers, electricity, Wi-Fi, and more. Hit the link in the description for more details. And if you can't make it this year, I now have pre-booking available on my website for next year. I hope you've enjoyed this week's video. As a wildlife photographer who focuses primarily on photographing backcountry wildlife, those are the animals that are found in more remote areas that are generally less tolerant around people. This is a topic and a craft that I am just obsessed with. I'm always trying to figure out new ways to stay hidden from the wildlife that I photograph and help make them feel comfortable as I photograph them. I've actually got a new blind that I've just finished that I'll be putting to the test out here in the next few weeks and I'm so excited to be able to share that with you here in the coming videos on YouTube. Thank you so much for following along this week. I hope you've learned something from this video and I hope that it's given you some ideas of some things that you can try to get the images of the wildlife that you're hoping to photograph. Thanks again for following along. We'll see you next time.